I have another little book that I bumped into and I found something pretty startling in this book. So I thought I'd share that with you. Um, principally, I wanted to share a change of a law in 1662 Virginia. And this book, it's called The Hemingses of Monticello. Monticello is Thomas Jefferson's home. The Hemingses are one of the families of slaves that he had. And there was an interesting relationship that I'll mention in a second. We went by English laws in the English colonies, which makes perfect sense. And one of the laws was you are what your father is. What that means in essence is if you were born out of wedlock, you had the right to your father's name, maybe his property on his death, maybe his profession while he lived. That's how it was up till 1662. But in Virginia, and then subsequently in all the other southern states, they changed to a Latin-based law that basically, in a nutshell, said you are what your mother is. So now, if you're born out of wedlock, you, you have the name of your mother as your last name. You don't have any rights to your father's property, his name, his profession, nothing. Why did they make that change? Well, we have common sense, some of us, so let's just think about the consequence of this. If I'm a white slave owner and I have sexual relations with my black slaves and they get pregnant and have children, I no longer have to take responsibility for them. I can, but I don't have to. The law, in essence, gave permission to white masters raping their slaves having children, and then having nothing to do with them. In the case of Thomas Jefferson, we won't necessarily say whether it was consensual or not consensual, because I don't know if you can have a consensual sexual relationship with a slave, but Thomas Jefferson had seven children by one of his slaves, and her name was Sally Hemings. What's peculiar, odd about her, is this. Thomas Jefferson had a white wife. He had six children by her, but she had really tough times with the childbirths, and, and childbearing, and so she died fairly young, but he had a young slave that was taking care of his daughters when he was traveling, and her name was Sally Hemings. Well, here's what's bizarre. Sally Hemings was the half-sister, his wife. So, just so that we're clear, Thomas Jefferson's father-in-law had a white wife and had a daughter who married Thomas Jefferson and was his wife and mother of six children, and then subsequently died. And then his father-in-law had a slave with the last name of Hemings, who then he had sexual relations with, and or raped, and she had a baby, and that baby's name was Sally. Now Sally and Thomas got together just a little bit around her 16th birthday, and they were together subsequently for 30 years and had seven children. And all of those children, their last names were Hemings, not Jefferson. And one of them was James Madison Hemings. I mean, Thomas Jefferson named uh, one of his children by Sally after James Madison, the president, one of his good friends. But the last name was Hemings because of the way the law was written. It's just a bizarre world we live in. He did have in his will that all of his children by Sally were freed on his death. Um, and she wasn't, ironically, Sally wasn't. But then one of the children did bring her in um, and no one made a fuss. And so Sally Hemings kind of lived free as an older woman uh, with one of her um, children. It's just bizarre what you learn in books. So this book won the Pulitzer and she is an amazing author. And boy, is there a lot of things in this book way past my video. But I just wanted to share those couple of tidbits and thank you for joining us.